Hello again, and welcome to Culture Dime. Now, this is a very important episode. This episode will be about one of the most important days of the Bahamas, and one of my favorites. Yes, it's that awesome time again when we get to celebrate independence in the Bahamas. It's July 10th, 2020, and this is going to make 47 years of independence. So this video is primarily about our independence, but I also wanted to talk a bit about our history. In this video, I plan to keep the history brief because I also plan to have future videos going into more depth. So let's get into it. So we start off with the Lucayans, the original settlers of the Bahamas. They were discovered later on by Christopher Columbus during one of his journeys and voyages. And after that, the Bahamas was under British rule for 325 years before we became independent. July 10th, 1973 is the monumental day. We elected our first Honorable Prime Minister Sir Lyndon Pinlay. He became the first acting Prime Minister of the newly freed Bahamas. 47 years ago, we gained independence and we've always taken time to celebrate, even to this day. We celebrate our lands by going to our beautiful beaches, enjoying and spending time with our families, dining on our native food and delicacies, and even have a few of our locally brewed beers. And of course, always a spectacular celebration of fireworks. Celebrating our independence has always been an exciting day for us. But with independence, we've had a lot of things that have changed as well as some things that have stayed the same. An example of one of the things that we've kept from our British rule is our national sport, cricket, which is still played in the Bahamas today. The local cricket federation is building character in these young men. Although a few things have stayed the same, more importantly, we've made a lot of changes since our independence. For example, this is an image of what our original coat of arms looked like. Notice the British ships, and the shield, and the Queen's crown. And this is our current coat of arms. After we've gained independence, you'll notice we've added a few things. Let's go over it. First is our national fish, the powerful blue marlin. Next is our national bird, the majestic pink flamingo. In the shield is the Santa Maria, one of Columbus's ships that he used to make the voyage to the Bahamas and the Caribbean. And sitting atop a queen conch, royalty of the sea. All of these things and more come together to form our coat of arms, which is used in all of our official documents. Interestingly enough, our coat of arms wasn't the only symbol that was changed. What about our flag, you ask? Well, our very first flag had a simple design but it was just to show royalty for the queen. Notice the crown, the simple royal color blue, and the gold around it. To the flag our country flies today. Now I plan to go in a lot more depth about our flag because it has a rich history, but for now I'm just going to explain the colors and what they represent. So we have the color black, which represents the strength of our people. Gold, which represents the sun that shines over us. And aquamarine for the beautiful waters, of the Bahamas. Even the shapes of the flag has meaning. For example, the triangle is pointing forwards, as in the Bahama land always marching forward. Interesting, right? Now let's move on to money. The Bahamas was always known as a port for trading, so of course our currency would change over time. We started out on the British system of pounds and shillings, and then we moved on to the dollar system. Now that's something that's changed, but something that's remained the same is we still show honor to the queen by printing her on our hundred dollar bills. We also show our prime minister, our first prime minister, on our dollar bills, as well as other historical events and historical figures and monuments. Because our country is so rich in trading that our dollar currency is considered on par with the US in our country. To top this video off, I got a suggestion from the comment section of one of my last videos from one of my subscribers and they had the very good idea to go and interview people to get their opinion on what it means to be Bahamian. 
So I went and I did that. But I received so many interviews and so much comments that I decided to make that another video. But and so we're at the end of the video. I know it was a bit lengthy. So to end it, I decided to save the best for last, which is our pledge and our national anthem. I pledge my allegiance to the flag and to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, for which it stands, one people united in love and service.